In this video, we're going to focus on making modifications to requests going to the server or responses coming back from the server. So Fiddler Everywhere is positioned uniquely as a proxy, so it's sitting between the client browser and the server, and we're going to take advantage of that position to be able to make modifications either on the way to the server or on the way back. We're going to do it by using a combination of either the composer or the rules. Once again, we'll be looking at this fictional travel web page. And if we look at what these requests look like by default in Fiddler Everywhere, we can see that bootstrap.min.css is about 27K. And if we look in the bottom right for the raw response, we can see that it's using gzip, which is a type of compression. So we're going to make a modification to this using the composer, and we're going to change the request being sent to the server. So if we take a look at the inspectors for the request headers, if we scroll down, we'll notice an accept encoding. So the way the compression works is the client will send and say they accept this type of encoding. So either gzip, deflate, or broadly. That's a signal to the server that it can use compression. So we're going to use composer to remove that request header so we can see how the server will respond differently. So first we're going to right click on the bootstrap min.css and say edit in composer. And we'll see now that we see the request headers being sent up above. We'll simply scroll down. And in this case, I just want to remove that because I want to see how the server will respond differently. So I'm just going to actually delete that specific request header. Then I can hit execute again. So I've modified the request that's now being sent to the server. If I hit execute and I go back to the live capturing, we'll see that bootstrap min was requested again, but this time it's about 122K. So if we scroll down on the right, you can see it no longer says anything about being compressed. So that was our first simple example of Fiddler Everywhere sitting between the client and the web server and being able to allow us to capture it and make modifications. It's often difficult to simulate certain things from a client's perspective. By being able to use Composer, we can either manually create a request, or as I demonstrated, just make a small modification to a request just to see how the server is going to respond differently. This might be something that I want to execute again in the future. So one of the nice features in Fiddler Everywhere is I can save this request so that I can just directly replay it again in the future. So I simply right click on that specific request and say save, the selected session in this case. I'm going to give it a name. You see I can do password protection. I can store it locally or I could save it in the cloud so other people would have access to it if I chose to share with them. I can group it in a specific folder. In this case, I'm just going to save it directly. And now we'll see on the left-hand side under my sessions the no compression that we've saved. So in the future, if I want, I can simply click on that and execute it again without having to make the modification another time. The Composer is very handy when I want to make specific requests modify them, try things out. If I want to use it more than once, I might want to instead use a rule. So for the rule, I can just right click and say add new rule. I'm going to edit it here on the right. So in this case, on the right hand side, I'm going to simply say I want to update the request header. And I'm going to type in accept encoding, and I'm going to choose to just remove that header. So again, now in this case, if I say, I'm going to focus on bootstrap min.css. I could go after any particular file or just do it for all of the requests, but I'm going to automatically take that accept re encoding request header off as the client is sending it to the server. After we've modified the rule, we're going to enable the rules to run. So we'll open that up. That's now enabled. And now we'll go back and refresh the web page. And now that that's been refreshed, we'll go back to Fiddler Everywhere. 
and we can see that now bootstrap min.css is no longer compressed. It's about 122K as we saw before. So the advantage of using a rule is I don't need to do it one at a time. I can have it automatically happen while I have this rule open between the client and the server. These things are just going to happen. So anytime it saw bootstrap min.css in this case, it will remove that header. The server will think the client does not support compression, so it will send it back without it using any HTTP compression. Let's take a look at a different example about how modifications can tell us something about how this server is behaving. This site was something that was provided in the Fiddler Classic days, and it's just a represents an e-commerce site where a particular, in this case, convertible tablet is available. We want to see how the site behaves and see if there's anything that's odd about it. So first we'll just choose to order and do a checkout of one. And we'll go see that it's telling us we ordered one for the price of $1,095. Let's see what that looks like in Fiddler Everywhere. So in Fiddler Everywhere we can see the post request. We'll look at the inspectors. And we'll, we want to take a look at what the request looks like to the server. So in this case something is interesting. It's sending form data. It's actually posting the price from the client to the web server. So that disturbs me slightly because I don't want to trust input from the client. I want to have that price or cost be something that's determined on the server. So since we notice that it's here, it's a good opportunity for us to use either composer or rules to make a modification and make sure that the server's actually got its cost server side and it's not using what an untrusted client is sending. So let's go create a rule for this. Again, we'll right click, say add a new rule. We'll edit that. We'll just call it discount. And what I want to see is on the right hand side, I'm going to make a modification in this case to the body of that request. So we'll say update request body. And we're going to change a particular value. So I noticed as that was part of the post request, so I can say ampersand cost equals 1095 and replace that with ampersand cost equals $1. We'll save this and if we make that request again, so I'm just going to replay that request. Now if I click on that and look at the inspector, we're going to look at what the response says. If we roll down, we'll see unfortunately the server was trusting the client and it's actually taken the price of a dollar that we substituted using a rule. So again, I could have used Composer, I could have used Rules, but Fiddler Everywhere is sitting between the client and the server. I'm able to test something to validate that the server is not actually using the price from the client, but unfortunately it is. So we've seen a few examples already. There's lots of use cases where you may want to take advantage of this, but both Composer and Rules give me the opportunity to change parts about the request coming from the client to the server. Often some of these things may be difficult to simulate or you can't do it in the browser itself, but you have full control and Composer about what that request will look like to the server or the rules I can create to make modifications to any part of that request as it's being sent. Now that we've seen how to make modifications from the client to the server, let's look at the reverse. We want to make modifications so the client sends to the server, the server generates its response, and we want to change that response before the client sees it. So one of the first ones we'll look at is the ability to just return a specific response. Now that we've requested the page, we can see the requests that are being made. I'm going to take the bootstrap min.css, right click and say I want to add a new rule. If I edit this rule, we'll just say return 404. On the right hand side, I can choose a predefined response. So there are canned responses for typical things and one of them would be a 404 error. 
So I'm just going to hit that and say save. And we'll go back and re-execute the page in the browser. So I hit Control F5 and we can see more or less what you might expect. Now that that particular file got a 404 back, I don't have any of the bootstrap styles I need to be able to display the page properly. So it's a nice way to cause specific failures. I've used it a lot with third-party vendors where I want to see what would happen if one of their files does not come back like we would expect. So there are a lot of predefined responses. In this case, I did a 404, the page is not found. I could do the 500 series, which are various server errors. Uh, there's a lot of other 400s for bad requests, not having authorization, etc. Just a quick way with rules to be able to intercept the response that was supposed to come back from the server and change it before it gets to the client. Not only can I return predefined responses, but I can actually modify the specific response that's going to go back to the client. So I've made the request again in the browser. We'll look at Fiddler everywhere. When I see these requests, I'm going to click on the HTML page itself and just say add a new rule. I'm going to edit this. I'll call it modify page. And on the right hand side, I can just choose the manual response and I see the actual response that had been sent back from the server. So in this case, let's just change the title. I'm just going to add my name there to show that it's been modified. I'll hit save. Let's go back and re-execute that again in the browser. Now as I hit Control F5, you'll see the title has changed. So again, Fiddler Everywhere is sitting between the client and the server. It just intercepted that request. As the response came back, I chose to make a manual modification and added something to the title. Next thing we'll look at is there's often times where I might just want to try changing a style, but I don't want to go through the whole process of deploying my CSS to a stage environment, or in this case, let's say I'm working against production and I can't just move it into production to see what's going to happen. So I can actually use a rule and modify something before it comes back to the client just to get an experience about how will this behave if I were to make this change so I can do it all locally here from my machine. In this case, I'm looking at site CSS, and on the right-hand side, I see that the body has that color, and I just want to see what would happen if I changed that to red, for instance. What kind of impact would that have on the client? And again, I want to do it without having to deploy these changes. It might be a separate group that does the build and the moves. I can actually do a lot of uh, rapid development here on the client just by making my own changes what's coming back from the server. So let's create a rule for this. We'll modify that rule. I'll just call it use red. And on the right hand side, I can just choose to update the response body. So I've created a rule and on the right hand side I'm saying I want to update the response body as it comes back from the server before it goes to the client. I want to find and replace in this case the specific color we saw with the color red and see what that does. So we'll save this. We'll go back to the browser. I'll hit Control F5. And as I scroll down, we'll see now what the impact would be. So again, without having to deploy to production, I can do some very simple tweaks by using rules just to see how the client's going to behave until I think it's correct and then I can pass it off to other people or do the deployment I need to do to have it actually in stage or production. So it just makes my loop that much faster on the client, being able to make quick changes and decide what that will look like. For this last example, in this case, I may want to make multiple modifications to files, so I don't want to go through the process of creating rules for that. I actually want to have a local copy on my machine replace what the client is asking for the server from. When that response comes back, it will actually pull the file off my local machine instead, and then I can use my normal editor to make a series of changes to it. So now I can isolate working on things on the client while I'm still pointing at my production server, stage server, possibly a vendor's website. I can make all of those modifications here locally.
So we'll look at the site CSS file again. We're going to right click and say export. I'm going to do that selected session. I'm going to choose to save the raw files. And in this case, I'm just going to save it on my desktop. And it happens to give today's date, which is fine. I'll do a save. Now when we go to the desktop, if we open that folder, we can see it's going to have the site's name, the CSS folder. I'm just going to move this to the desktop just to make it a little easier to edit. So now that I have the file here locally, I just want to set up a rule that says if you ever see a request for this file, please use it from my desktop rather than getting it from the server. So back in Fiddler Everywhere, we'll set up a rule. We'll edit that rule. And again, on the left side, it's just looking for, we'll say, use local CSS. The left side's looking for that particular file. And on the right hand side, I'm just going to say I want to pull this actually from a specific response file. So I can just browse for that file. And we'll save this rule. Now that that's set up, I can go open my editor and make a lot of changes to that file if I want. So let's go do that. So in my case, I like using Visual Studio Code, so I can come in now and make specific changes. So let's just show the same thing we showed before. Change that to red. I can go through and make whatever other kind of modifications I'm going to make. We'll save this, and we'll go back and execute again in the browser. So as I hit Control F5, it's going back to the server. The server's returning its response. That rule notices a request for site CSS, but sees I want to pull it locally from my desktop instead of the server. So if I scroll down, we'll see the same effect. It actually shows it in red because I'm serving from my local CSS file. So again, in this video, we've seen how to use both Composer and rules to make modifications to either requests to the server from the client or make changes to the response that came from the server to the client. This is very powerful and lets me do a lot of testing and tweaking uh, without having to make them in my actual environment. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how you can use Fiddler Everywhere to do a performance evaluation of a website. So there's a lot of things that are easy to identify looking for specific best practices and techniques that we can see in a Fiddler trace between the client and the particular server. So that will be the focus of our next video.